Hey guys, Bartels Bookshelf here with my, uh, what is this now, my, 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 my fourth Star Trek book haul, I believe. <laughs> this is following up on um, the one I posted uh, recently. I had two big lots that came in on the same day, so this is the second one, this is the smaller one. Although this has about as many books as the previous one, there's like 31 in here, I think. Mostly uh, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, and some New Frontier stuff, but we'll, uh, as usual, we'll get into it together, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's, let's go. This box is a lot more sturdy than the last one, which is falling apart. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's get into this. All right, first on the docket is Next Generation number 34, Blaze of Glory by Simon Hawk. The USS Enterprise is assigned to the planet Catral, a planet just coming out from under the heel of barbarous suppression. When the planet's newly emerging freedom is threatened by a, a rouge, they mean rogue ship, it says rouge ship, attacking Federation shipping, Captain Jean-Luc Picard and his crew put their lives on the line to protect Catral from the raids. But the planet itself holds a deadly secret, one that could lead to a resurgence, they spelled resurgence incorrectly, Jesus Christ, who, who copy edited, the, edited this? Of the despotic cruelty they have suffered for centuries, with time running out, Captain Picard must see his way past a maze of deadly deception with billions of lives hanging in the balance. So there you go. Blaze of glory. We'll see. Oh, interesting. Okay, so this is um, Probe by Margaret Wander Bonanno. This is a, a standalone a spellbinding sequel to Star Trek IV. Here now is Probe, an epic-length novel that at last picks up the story of the Enterprise and, the, and her crew where Star Trek IV left off, a novel that reveals the secrets behind the mysterious probe that almost destroyed Earth, and whose reappearance sends Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, and their shipmates hurtling into unparalleled danger and unsurpassed discovery. Interesting. Don't know much about that. We'll see. Ah, here we go. I, m I mentioned this before in my previous videos. I have books two and three now, and this is the first book. This is the Star Trek The Lost Years by J.M. Dillard. As I said before, this is the novel that uh, goes into the period in between um, the end of the original series and the, and the first movie. Um, so yeah, now I can finally start that whenever I decide to get onto that, so looking forward to that. We'll see how that is. Next we have uh, Day of Honor, book four of four, Treaties Law by Dean Wesley Smith and Christine Catherine Rush. Uh, of course, this is four of four, so I can't comment much about this. I don't know <laughs> much about it. I know Day of Honor it, it has a lot to do with the Klingons. There's um, Commander Kor there. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Classic Klingon stuff, maybe. Uh, this is uh, Deep Space Nine, The Search. Talked about this in a previous video. This is a duplicate, but this is an adaptation of a two-part premiere of season three of um, Deep Space Nine. Really good episode. Hope the book is just as good. Oh, now, now this one I was really, really excited to get to. This is uh, Deep Space Nine, The Lives of Dax. This is a, a short story collection uh, edited by Marco Palmieri. Um, and each story is a storyline revolving around one of Dax's previous um, sim um, previous hosts, all the way from um, from Leela all the way to Ezri Dax. I've heard a lot about this. This is considered one of the inaugural books in the relaunch series that's um, post Deep Space Nine. Um, so really interested to dig into that and see what that's like. A lot of people uh, recommend this one highly. Oh, here we go. <laughs> That's the thing of doing these uh, completely blind. Um, so here's the first book of uh, Day of Honor, Star Trek The Next Generation, Ancient Blood by Diane Carey. To true Klingon warriors, no occasion is more sacred than the Day of Honor when they pay homage to all that makes them Klingon, but honor demands its price. Worf finds his honor tested when he goes undercover to infiltrate a planetary criminal network. How can he root out the corruption on Syndicash without resorting to deceit and treachery himself? Worf's dilemma is shared by his son, Alexander, who searches for the true meaning of honor in his own human heritage. Along with his son, Worf must confront deadly danger and the inner struggles of his Klingon soul. Interesting. So I guess each of these books goes into some, some of the different um, Klingon characters throughout Star Trek history and their, their sort of versions of the Day of Honor and stuff like that. Um, I like the idea of Worf going undercover. That sounds fun, so I'll look forward to that. Let's see, next we have uh, Next Generation Descent by Diane Carey. This is, I've talked about this before, this is a duplicate. This is an adaptation of a two part episode of Star Trek where the Borg come back and they're a lot more aggressive. So, yeah. Unification by Jerry Taylor. Gotta have one of those. I guess I haven't I haven't looked at the listing since I ordered this, so I don't remember everything that's on here. But here's um, Day of Honor, Book Two of Four, Deep Space Nine, Armageddon Sky. 
and that's cool. It's got the older version of Core there, so this is a story between Core and uh, Worf, I'm guessing. Dispatched on a secret mission to investigate the raids, Commander Worf of Deep Space Nine and the crew of the Defiant find themselves trapped in an alien world threatened by global cataclysm, trapped along with Klingons who were exiled to this world for their loyalty to Worf's dishonored family. Worf must find a way to save the Klingons, whose honor bade them to keep their pledges to the House of Mog, despite the orders of the Emperor, and to prevent a bloody massacre that will forever stain the honor of the Klingon Empire. Cool, cool. Aha, uh -huh, and finally, here's a <clears throat> book three of four of Day of Honor, Star Trek Voyager by Michael Jan Friedman. Belana Torres has never cared for the Day of Honor. Ashamed of her Klingon heritage, she regards the holiday as an unwanted reminder of all she has struggled to repress. Besides, something awful always seems to happen to her then. Her bad luck seems to be running true to form when she and Harry Kim are captured by alien slavers. Imprisoned by the enigmatic Rizati, forced to mine for deadly radioactive ore, Torres will need all her strength and cunning to survive, and her honor as well. Cool, cool. I've just recently gotten into Voyager. I saw a few episodes here and there growing up, but um, I never actually watched the whole thing. But now uh, I'm nearly finished with the first season, and it's I don't like it as much as some of the other shows. That seems to be kind of the general consensus among fans, but I am enjoying it, and Belana Torres is a really interesting character, half human, half Klingon, so I'll look forward to see how that turns out. Here we have Next Generation Planet X by Michael Jan Friedman. Again, uh, this is a duplicate. I've read and reviewed this already. X-Men Next Generation crossover. It was decent, not great, but there's that. And here we go. I'm really excited to get to these. So, so I mentioned, uh, so this is a duplicate here of uh, book one of, the, of New Frontier by Peter David. So I already talked about this in my previous video. We also have book two, book three, and book four, and these first four books um, all kind of make up the first um, chunk of the New Frontier storyline. These were all uh, novellas, basically, and then they were compiled into a book, and then the rest of them are novel, regular novel length, so that basically completes that first run of the New Frontier series. Next we have uh, the adaptation of Star Trek Klingon, the video game, a uh, novel by Dean Wesley Smith and Christine Catherine Rush. Um, this was a, a CD, uh, CD-ROM game that came out in 1996, I believe. That was an FMV game where you were playing, you were in the holodeck and you were like learning about Klingon culture and so you were interacting with various Klingons and kind of doing all this stuff. It was a pretty cheesy game, as a lot of FMV games were, but I don't know, might be fun. Another uh, duplicate here, this is uh, the novelization of Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home by Vonda N. McIntyre. I've already talked about this, so there you go. Uh, another duplicate, uh, this is Corona by Greg Bear. This is number 15 in the uh, original series. Now, I know Greg Bear is a very re well-respected sci-fi author, so hopefully that'll be good. Another adaptation of a, a video game. Um, I haven't looked into this one, so I have no idea what it's like, but I think it's similar to... Um, to Klingon, I think I believe it's an FMV game, but this is Star Trek Starfleet Academy by Diane Carey. This is a pretty terrible cover, but um, yeah. Uh, Cadet David Forrester has made it to Starfleet Academy's command school, where the starship captains of the future are trained on mission simulators that make you feel as if you are really on the bridge of a Federation starship. But there's trouble at the Academy. Sabotage, conflict, and a series of accidents throw Forrester's team of cadets into a scramble for their very lives. Determined to save his crew, Forrester rushes to stop a plot to destroy the Academy itself and is thrust into a mission with Starfleet legends Captain James T. Kirk, Captain Hikaru Sulu, and Commander Pavel Chekhov. Together they must find the cause behind a series of ever-deadlier raids on Federation outposts by an unknown enemy. So there you go. We'll see what that's like. I'll have to check the game out after this and, and, and see what it's like. <laughs> Got a couple of DS9 books here. Number 10, Valhalla by Nathan Archer. Tensions caused by speculation that Cardassia is about to reoccupy Bajor are complicated by the arrival of a strange alien ship. When it's discovered that the crew is dead and the ship is carrying valuable Gamma Quadrant technology, it becomes a sought-after prize which Commander Sisko must fight to keep out of Cardassian hands. Meanwhile, Sisko also finds himself at odds with Major Kira, who believes the ship is Bajoran property. When the alien ship suddenly seizes control of Deep Space Nine and the Cardassians move in to try to capture it, Sisko must face off against a shipload of angry Cardassians and the alien being controlling Deep Space Nine. Interesting, interesting. I'll, I'll be interested to check out these Deep Space Nine novels because I know um, the ones that were written during the show, a lot of the writers kind of struggled with because Deep Space Nine became more and more serialized as it went on, so it was very difficult for them to write something that didn't contradict what was already being done in the show. So we'll see how that turns out. And then next we have um, Deep Space Nine Avatar, book two of two, um, by S.T. Perry. This is... Um, 
this, this uh, duology, uh, I don't have the first one, I don't think, although I might have that in a different lot. But this is the uh, beginning of the um, of the relaunch series of DS9, which was the series of books that came out after the show ended. Um, I've heard a lot of love, people have a lot of love for the, for this series. Um, people really like them. They're kind of complicated. I'm not sure how I'm going to dig into them. And I, and I want to finish the show first before I, I do that. But So there you go, Avatar Part 2 of 2. Another copy of uh, Star Trek Vendetta by Peter David. Gotta have one of those. We have a couple Voyager books here. This is a uh, number eight in the numbered series, Cybersong by oh, <laughs> I was covering up with my finger by S. N. Lewitt. A mysterious signal lures the starship Voyager to an uncharted sector of the Delta Quadrant and an enigmatic ghost ship floating adrift in space. Janeway mounts an investigation, hoping the alien ship may hold a clue to the whereabouts of the caretaker's long-lost ship and his mate, the only known entity with the power to send the Voyager home. The ghost ship appears deserted, but soon a strange presence casts an eerie spell over the hearts and souls of the crew. Unless Janeway can solve the vessel's mystery, Voyager itself may succumb to its haunting song. Once again, a, uh, a storyline where the crew gets affected by some mysterious alien disease or, 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 or hypnotism or whatever. But those are always fun. We'll see how that turns out. Uh, next, we have a novelization of the episode Flashback. This is by Diane Carey. I haven't gotten to this episode yet, but I know um, but I know this is based on a very popular episode that revolved around uh, Tuvok serving under Captain Sulu on the uh, Excelsior. Um, so that should be interesting. We'll see. Uh, so th these are interesting. I, I wasn't going to collect these, but since they're, they're, I, there's a few of them in these lots, I might just try them out. So this is um, Star Trek The Return by William Shatner. Um, this is the first and what's colloquially known by the fans as the Shatnerverse series, which is Shatner uh, writing his own series of stories about Kirk after uh, being resurrected after his death in Star Trek Generations. Um, I've heard mixed things about him, but I don't know. Could be interesting. We'll see. Another... Um, <laughs> half part of a series. This is uh, Deep Space Nine Mission Gamma, book two of four. I believe this is also part of the relaunch series. Uh, the political intrigue aboard Deep Space Nine escalates when Gul Maset's warship arrives at the station with, with an unexpected passenger. Cardassian Ambassador Natima Lang has returned to the station on a mission of hope, but it's one that will bring back old wounds and old ghosts. As tensions rise on all sides, Colonel Kira Norris discovers that the line between friend and foe is narrower than she ever imagined. Elsewhere, the crew of the damaged starship Defiant forges an uneasy alliance with an unusual alien species, one whose unique biological makeup is the key to the balance of power in that region of the Gamma Quadrant. As the crew becomes ensnared in a web of deceit, Lieutenant Ezri Dax and Ensign Thirishar Chitain struggle to stave off a genocidal war. Cool, cool. We'll see what that's like. <laughs> Annoyed that I only have book two of four, but hopefully I can get the rest. Next we have Star Trek Prime Directive by Judith and Garfield Reeve Stevens. Starfleet's most sacred commandment has been violated. Its most honored captain is in disgrace. Its most celebrated starship in pieces, and the crew of that starship scattered among the thousand worlds of the Federation. Thus begins Prime Directive, an epic tale of the Star Trek universe. Journey with Spock, McCoy, and the rest of the former crew of the Starship Enterprise to Talon, the planet where their careers ended, a world once teeming with life that now lies ruined, its cities turned to ashes, its surface devastated by a radioactive firestorm because of their actions. There they must find out how and why this tragedy occurred and discover what has become of their captain. This is another book that I've heard a lot of praise for. A lot of fans really like this as kind of just a an interesting exploration of the Prime Directive and sort of exploring the, the pros and cons of that. So yeah, really interested to check that out. Got another Voyager book here, number three, Ragnarok by Nathan Archer. Hope flares for Captain Catherine Janeway and the crew of the Voyager when their sensors detect a signal that could lead them to a way home. But as the starship Voyager races to the source of the signal, the crew find themselves in the middle of a raging battle between two warring races, a battle that has lasted for hundreds if not thousands of years. Now, to find a way home, Captain Janeway and her crew must make their way through the most violent space-borne conflict ever known, with both sides determined to destroy them. Uh, yet another storyline about opposing alien species and Starfleet people getting in the middle of it. We've seen that a million times, but you don't know. You never know it's good until you try it. Might be great. We'll see. And lastly, we have a couple of uh, next generation books here. Number forty-two, Infiltrator by W. R. Thompson. Centuries ago, followers of the tyrant Khan Noonien Singh left Earth for the planet Hera to continue his experiment in selective breeding. Now they are finally ready to launch their plan of universal domination with the USS Enterprise as their weapon. Captain Picard must enlist the help of Heron expatriate Astrid... Kemal to defeat her fellow superbeings. Unless the captain and, her and crew of the Enterprise can stop them, the Heron infiltrators could alter the genetic landscape of the galaxy for generations to come. Cool, cool, going into sort of the augments and uh, 
the, the, the remnants of the eugenics war sounds interesting. And then lastly, we have number 39, Rogue Saucer by John Vornolt. While its own saucer section receives needed repairs, the USS Enterprise tests a new experimental saucer. In theory, the new saucer can survive a planetary crash landing, but will it come through intact under genuine test conditions? Riker, Data, Worf, and LaForge risk their lives to, a to find out, and so does Admiral Necheyev of Starfleet. But a dangerous test turns even more deadly when hostile forces seize control of the saucer and turn it against the Enterprise. Interesting. So the Enterprise fighting against their own saucer could be interesting. Yeah, I'll like to check that out. And with that, that was the end of uh, this haul. Uh, I've got one more really big lot coming in from, uh, from eBay, and then I think after that I'm going to cool it for a while on these lots, because I've got way too many Star Trek books now. Um, but I, I, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a comment. Talk, let me know which books of these, if you've read any of them, what you like, what are your favorites. Talk to me about Star Trek. I'm here for it. I'm here for all the Star Trek talk. So uh, until then, uh, I'll see you guys later, and uh, live long and prosper, as usual. <laughs>